This is the oldest city in Malaysia. It was founded over 600 years ago and it's also the birthplace of Malaysia's rich history. This is probably the most iconic fort in the whole of Malaysia. It's listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is full of archaeological artifacts, delicious cuisines and it's an overall fun place to explore. Today, I'm going to share with you 17 things to experience here in Malacca. When you first arrive in a city, you'll be welcomed by the sight of these historical landmarks and colonial buildings. Which takes us to the first thing to do, explore the historical sites. There isn't really an ideal way to start exploring, but you could begin your heritage trail at the Dutch Square or also known as the Red Square. From there, all the iconic landmarks like the Church of St. Paul, the A Formosa Fort Gate, and some ruins of the walls are all within walking distance. Between them are quite a few museums. Some are free like this Fort Museum, but do bear in mind all museums are closed on Mondays. Most of these sites are colonial artifacts that were left behind by the Portuguese, Dutch and British during their centuries rule of Malacca since the 1500s. But before all that, there was the Malacca Sultanate. And fortunately, we get a chance to take a peek into the past by visiting this palace. It's a reconstruction of the actual palace that was destroyed during the invasion and is built entirely out of wood. Inside, there are more artifacts, rooms and hallways, all featuring how life in the palace was like back then. Despite looking like an old building, it's actually fully air-conditioned, so you could take your time and explore. Next up is Jonker Street, or also known as Jonker Walk. It's just across the Malacca River and is one of the busiest streets in the city. The street has a very vintage vibe and is full of really old shop houses. So old that they do date back about a few centuries or so. It's a great place to shop for souvenirs. Or you could also buy or rent a baju kebaya from the local boutique. The baju kebaya is a local traditional nyonya clothing and there are quite a few picturesque spots in this street where the outfit will really blend in. The street is also a good place to find some food. There are many cafes and restaurants along the entire stretch. Some even promote local dishes like chicken rice balls and nyonya food. Although in my opinion, it may be a bit touristy, but it's not a bad place to try it out. Jonker Street really comes to life during the night market. It only opens in the evenings on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays. And during this time, the main roads will be closed off to all vehicles. So it's going to be a lot nicer to walk around. We came here about 6 o'clock in the evening and the crowd was already starting to pour in. There were lots of souvenir stalls but what we love most is the street food. They've got everything here. Sausages, dim sum, seafood, stir-fried pasta, this massive skewered deep-fried potato. And if you venture a little deeper into the night market, there'll also be tables and chairs for you to enjoy your meal. Taking a tri ride is undoubtedly the most touristy thing you can do here in Malacca. But it is good fun. The tri are all decked out colourfully and usually blast out loud music when they ride. The ride usually takes tourists on a sightseeing route around the historical sites. We took a ride at night but you'll probably get to see more during the day. You can find these tri at the Dutch Square or the A Formosa Fort Gate during the day and at night, you can also find them at the entrance of Jonker Street. Next up, we have the Tamingsari Tower. It's essentially a revolving tower that takes you up 80 meters or about 260 feet and it starts rotating slowly. It's kind of like a bubble leaf with seats. You get to see most of the historical sites from up there. You see up to the coast. Yeah, it's so cool. The ride will last for 7 minutes and it can carry up to 66 passengers at one time. There's also an option to rent a binoculars, but you really don't need it and it can get quite disorienting. Take a walk at the Malacca River. Honestly, I think this is one of the best ways to explore the city. The river runs through most of the old parts of the city and it has really nice paved walkways on both sides. There are beautiful street arts and cafes to chill at. And often you get to see these tour boats going up and down the river. At night, the river is lit up with these neon lights, giving it some colourful glow that really transforms the ambience. There are also lots of bars and even restaurants serving up candlelight dinners by the river. Another quick and easy way to explore this river is by taking a cruise. This cruise takes you on a 45-minute ride, passing through all the iconic landmarks along the river. 
I suggest taking any of the window seats. It really doesn't matter which side because the boat will turn around at one point and you get to see both sides of the river. The cruise runs all day long from 9am in the morning until 11pm at night. The Baba and Nyonya Heritage Museum is one of the best places to learn about the lifestyle and culture of the Peranakan community here. This is an actual home of a prominent Peranakan family since the late 19th century. The museum is currently managed by the descendants of the family. Inside are multiple rooms all decorated with antiques. There's also a booklet that will guide you through each room, giving you a bit of history and context. But if you're like us, we did a simple walkthrough and let ourselves be taken back in time. Another way to explore Peranakan culture is through its cuisine. You can find many restaurants serving out Nyonya dishes like Ayam Pongte, Nyonya Laksa and Chendol all over Malacca. This cuisine is essentially a fusion of Chinese and Malay flavours. If you are interested to know more about the best foods to try in Malacca, we do have a separate video. We'll share the link in the description below. Next up on our list is Mami Jonker House. It's basically a snack shop but the brand Mami is one of Malaysia's most popular snacks. If you've never tried it, it's actually a crunchy noodle snack, kind of like eating instant ramen straight out of the packet. There's also this fun activity where you get to customize and assemble your very own cup noodles. It's a really cute process, taking you through a little mini factory line. Another place to get a bird's eye view of the city is the Shaw Sky Tower. It's located on the rooftop of one of the tallest buildings in Malacca. Now unlike the Tabing Sari Tower we mentioned earlier, you actually get to hang out here on this rooftop for as long as you want. Although it's further from the historical sites, you still get a really good view of the entire city. You also have the option to come up here at night and enjoy the scenery. Right below the Shaw Sky Tower is this old little village called Kampung Morton. It was built about 100 years ago and very well preserved as a traditional Malay village. The houses here are still occupied by the local residents and it has a really peaceful vibe. A stark contrast from the busy streets of Jonker Street nearby. There's also an old house that's now turned into a museum. It's called Villa Santosa and you can actually enter to check out how it looks like inside a wealthy village house. A little outside of the city is this beach called Pantai Klebang. It's a vast sandy beach area and a weekend hotspot for families to hang out. There are stalls along the beach road selling clothes, toys and all sorts of snacks. Although the water here isn't really meant for swimming, it's overall a nice spot to hang out. Next up is Flor de la Mar. Translated as Flower of the Sea, this is a replica of an old Portuguese ship in the 1500s. The ship was used for warfare and to haul cargo during its expeditions. Today, this tourist attraction is a museum and you can even explore multiple decks inside this ship. It features more history of Malacca as a trade port and the influence of the Portuguese and Dutch rule over the centuries. Zoo Malacca is another family-friendly attraction just about a half an hour's drive away from the city. It is the second largest zoo in Malaysia and it is home to over a thousand animals. There are educational animal shows and you'll also get a chance to feed the elephants for a small fee but the experience is priceless. They also have this dinosaur encounter area where you can walk amongst life-sized dinosaurs. It's a pretty large space dedicated just for the dinosaurs but if you're a fan, you'll definitely enjoy this. The Portuguese settlement in Malacca is home to the Kristang or Eurasian community. This place really has a unique vibe. But apart from the statue and architecture, the Kristang cuisine is also worth checking out. And the Portuguese square is probably one of the best places to try. It's basically a food court and all the restaurants here serve up pretty similar menus. The most notable dish to try would be the devil's curry and the baked fish. And that's all 17 things to experience here in Malacca. As usual, we'll leave more information and useful links in the description below so you guys can go check it out. We hope this video has been helpful to you and if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you'd like to follow us on our travel and food videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys!